Hey crafters, this is Paulette. Happy fall. Welcome to my craft studio. Today we're going to talk about some cookie making items. Uh, I bought some new cardstock to try for my card bases. And then I have a little discussion on sippy cups as well. So I have stumbled onto some cookie making blogs via some of my paper crafting blogs that I follow and I am so excited. I'm almost excited as I was when I found the card making blogs. Well, I learned to decorate cakes when I was 15. My mom and I took a class together and we had so much fun. She went on to decorate wedding cakes. She made my wedding cake. And if you don't cake decorate, um, it's just, you know, it's really easy. It's like everything else. If you know the tips and tricks to it, then anyone can do it. You know, that's half of the battle right there is the tips and tricks. And once you got them down, you are in like Flynn. So let's look real quick at some of these things. Now, I got these things at Walmart. I am so excited that Walmart is carrying Wilton products. This tip case was $5. It holds 26 tips, and I've already put my smaller tips in here. I've got my writing tips, then I go into kind of my star tips. My grass tips are here in the center. Then I've got flower tips, and then my rose tips. Here's a couple of ribbon or basket tips. This is a really fun grass. And I guess this is probably a shell, a specialty shell tip. And then my Wilton tip cleaner. This is essential. If you have invested or are going to invest in these metal tips, you will want a tip cleaner as well. I actually have several of these. Uh, I have one I keep just in the kitchen for cleaning my coffee cup lid. And then this one stays with my tips, exclusive for cleaning those. Because if you leave your frosting, if you leave sugar, a sugary substance, inside here, it will rust your, your metal tip. So you want to clean those and you want those to work for years and years just like your dies in your paper cutting craft. So that's really awesome. Uh, I, did, I did do this <laughs> and test it. Oh, I had one fall out. I have done this so many times and not had any problems. So that, that one, just, just for a that one is shorter than the other tips. So your standard size tips will stay in there really well. I also got a package of these couplers. And I have some I have some kind of gross stained up ones in here. Let me see if I can find one that's not all stained up. It's a two-piece thing. Here's the coupler and then here's the piece that holds the tip on. When I learned to make my bag, we, we made our bags with freezer paper. And you just take a rectangle of paper and you turn it into a cone. And I like to put tape on mine. My mom never does. But I like to put a piece of tape on mine. So here now is my cone. This is, this is just paper for an example. And then you take your scissors and you just cut the tip off. And sometimes you have to play around. Oh, that was pretty good. Then you can take one of your cake decorating tips. And now it will go onto your bag. Then you put your frosting down in there, squeeze this up, and you're ready to go. Ready to decorate. Then, if you want to use this on a different color, you unscrew this. You can get a different tip. Say so now you want to do some writing. Then you get a writing tip, and then you put that on. Now you're ready to do some writing and make some words. So really cool. Really fun. So these are some fun things. These were $2. You guys, that's 50 cents a piece. I don't know that they've ever been that inexpensive. So really awesome pricing at Walmart. 
This is meringue powder. This is one of the ingredients in the royal frosting, which I'm talking about thick sugar cookies from the bakery. They have that really smooth, very colorful icing that's perfectly smooth, perfectly uh, aligned on the cookies. This is one of the ingredients. I chose to buy this and try it first. I have a little bit of arthritis from carpal tunnel and then my back surgery. So I am going to try this. It's a very little amount of, you know, of this. Of course, if you're making massive amounts of cookies, you're going to want to invest in the big canisters. I did not see those at Walmart. I did see them, however, at Hobby Lobby. Um, they were close to $20, so you would want to use your you know, your Michaels, well no, I guess you can't use your Michaels coupon at Hobby Lobby. You'd have to use your 40% off coupon at Hobby Lobby and get a, a considerable discount on those. So, you may have to look at the, um, some things are exempt from the coupon, so you may have to look at that too to see what, what will go and what will not. So, I'm going to start out with this. $4.97 for this, uh, it's 4 ounces, and it takes a couple couple tablespoons or something per recipe. So that's good to start out. I also got these squeeze bottles. These are actually for the candy melt discs. And the candy melt discs are for these little molds. And mine, these are so old. These are so old. I used to pick these up uh, just randomly. Uh, sometimes the craft stores would be getting rid of them. And so I have, you know, a nice little stash. And you melt those candy discs, then you put them in these squeeze bottles, and then you squeeze these out. You know, squeeze different little colors in different little places and let those dry, and then come back and do the other colors. So kind of fun, you know. Something cute that you could put on top of cookies, too. But I bought these to use with the royal icing for the cookie decorating. And these are a very, very pliable, very squeezable bottle which is important for my hands. I did see some interesting bottles at Hobby Lobby. They had a bulbous bottom, and they were meant to actually put those cookie discs inside and then set the whole thing in the microwave and melt it that way. I don't know that I would be comfortable doing that, but anyway, let's get along. I get to, I get to going on about stuff. So $2. Uh, this was called Way to Celebrate, uh, distributed by Walmart. Um, and those are really, really good. Uh, this is how I used to store my tips in a frosting container. And these are ones that are too big. Uh, these are actually these are actually a dumpster dive. These really large ones, if you can believe that. But anyway, I have organized my my cookie cutters as well because I have you know 35 years worth of those collecting those. Um, I do want to talk briefly about sippy cups. I bought a new sippy cup. You know, we started out with this Dr. Brown's, which I love because it has this silicone. It has a two-piece mechanism here in the top that keeps it from leaking. A hard plastic piece here, and then the silicone piece snaps into that, and then that whole thing snaps into the lid itself. And it seats very well, and this cup does not leak. I love it. And there may even be, I haven't looked, there may even be some that hold more liquid, but we, we you know, advance to a larger cup. Uh, this one is a Playtex cup, and you know, I've really enjoyed these cups. They have this fabulous silicone mechanism here in the top. One for the drinking spout and one to let the air through. Uh, these have one little slit in each end, which is brilliant. They are a non-leak cup as well, but just for the sake of there being no, no silicone piece that fits against the cup when it shuts, I think they're starting to leak. And I think it's just usage over time. And you can see now that baby has teeth, uh, you know, to drink, uh, you know, her teeth are scuffing on that. So I don't really like that anymore. So I bought this uh, Munchkin brand... Cup. It says on here, spill proof, built in valve, no mess, soft silicone spout. Well, every one of those things sold me on this. And then I took it apart to wash it. Well, when I went to put it back together, I couldn't get this in here. Um, there's three little, three little nubs. There you can see them. And there's three coordinating little divots in the silicone. Well, I, you know, who's designing these things? Um, 
These should be equally spaced so that no matter where you stick this in, it would fit into the lid. But no. So I've marked mine with a black marker right there so I know that is the back of the thing. Because when I tried to put it back together after I washed it, it was like putting a puzzle, a mysterious puzzle together. I don't have time for that. So, but... This silicone does seat here um, and seals and therefore keeps it from leaking. There are two little X-cut valves right here to let air through. And there are two little X-cut valves here in the drinking thing. But I got to tell you, I gave this to Baby yesterday to drink out of. And she had to slurp on it forever to get water from it. So, uh, probably not the best, not the best idea if you want a good sippy cup. Lastly, I've got some paper, and we're going to have to hurry along. I talk way too much. I've been using this Georgia Pacific just because it's what I can get at Walmart for my card bases and for my calendars that I make every year. It's just, I don't know, it, it, it's changed. It's fallen down in quality, and I, I don't know why. So I looked at Hobby Lobby, and they did have these 50-piece paper packs by the Paper Studio they're a normal $8.99. The day that I got this, they were 50% off. So I bought two for the price of one. So that made them $4.50 a piece, which is an awesome, awesome price. It is nice, you guys. Here is my Georgia Pacific, and here is this. It is obviously thicker. There was no, there is no weight on here. It just says heavy weight. So I don't know what that means. There may be a standard weight for that, but really nice. And I even did a, I also got this stamp at Hobby Lobby. It's by Stamp Abilities. It's called Buckhead, normal $7.99, and it was 40% off. I love this image. I used this at a card party that another lady brought, and I love to stamp it in just some water-based dye ink. And then use your blender pen to blend it around. Now, I have, I have added some blender liquid to my pen because it wasn't working very well. So we'll see how that goes. But I love to do that. And I just think it turns out beautiful. I have a lot of hunters in my family. So it's just very easy. Easy and simple. And, and looks artistic. So whoever drew this... Awesome to the person who drew this because it is very lifelike and very nice. So anyway, I think that wraps it up. If you have any questions, be sure and let me know. I will be back sometime to share my cookie making. I do have a favorite sugar cookie recipe that I am probably going to use. And then I will share uh, the blogs that I think are most interesting and realistic. Um... So anyway, enjoy. Hey crafters, this is Paulette. So I'm still collecting a few things for my cookie making. I have made some cookies and I will be sharing those probably in this post. Um, but I've picked up a few things at Walmart and at Sam's. And so I just wanted to share my goodbyes with you. I got these shallow baking pans. They're aluminum, so they won't rust. They were $10.78. There's two in this package, so they were $5.39 a piece. They're about an inch deep here on the side. And what the cookie bakers do is they put their parchment paper here, cut out their cookie dough, lay their cookies on here, then they freeze them for about 30 minutes before baking. It keeps them from raising too much or stretching out. And they stack these pans in the deep freeze. So I already have one pan similar to this. So this will allow me three pans that I can stack up and then I can use a cookie sheet on the very top one if I need to. So I thought that was a very excellent buy. I also found these squeeze bottles and these are really, they're quite big but they ended up being 71 cents a piece. They're 16 ounces but they're the exact same size tip here as the small bottles that I bought the other day. And they have this really wide mouth. So I think this will be really, really good. What the cookie bakers do is they take a Ziploc bag and they put their royal frosting in this for these bottles that have a smaller neck. 
and then they cut one corner off and then they use these to squeeze the frosting down into their bottles which I think is just brilliant and awesome. I purchased freezer bags just because they're tougher than the sandwich bags and you could use them over and over again. I also found a little case. It was a four box case of Ziploc bags for $10.72. That ends up being $2.68 per box. These have 54 bags in them. I did get the quart size and that was this this bag right here which is perfect for doing any frosting things. Since I only had my four small bottles when I decorated my Thanksgiving cookies, I did have to cut the corner off and I just put that little plastic coupler that I shared in the previous video on some of my bags and did, I had to do the whites of my eyes with that, I had to do the pupils of my eyes with that because you really end up needing a few more colors than what four, four bottles will will hold. I also found this big roll of parchment at Sam's and I have no idea what parchment costs normally so I can't really compare but this was $5.98. There's 164 feet so it works out to be 17 cents a foot. I did bake my Thanksgiving cookies on this. It's awesome. Your cookies don't stick to the pan and I was able, I either left them on the pan or I was able to just slide that parchment, slide the cookies on the paper off of my pans uh, to stop them from cooking and then I just decorated them, you know, while they were on the paper. Now this has nothing to do with cookie making but I did find these hunks, <laughs> these hunks, these one, one pound packages of yeast at Sam's they were four sixty eight so two thirty four per per each one and I gotta tell you, I think I spend a dollar for those three little packs that are attached together, and I use two of them to make my cinnamon roll recipe, so this will be awesome. You can freeze your yeast, so I went ahead and got that large pack. I got these Wilton cake decorating colors at Walmart. This package contains eight. It was nine dollars and forty seven cents and it has eight different colors and I was really tempted. There's one that had nine or twelve excuse me it was thirteen dollars and change but I talked myself out of it. It had a brown like a skin tone in it but you know if you mix all of your colors together you're going to end up with a brown anyway so and some of the cookie bakers said you know they don't think about the black they just go ahead and mix up their colors and use them and then at the end they mix all their colors together and add black to it for the eyes so I thought that was a really a really good idea and I have organized my cookie cutters. Now these are a different bag. These had a little thing on the bottom, a little pleat on the bottom so they will stand up, which was not important to me, but that just happened to be what I grabbed at the store at Walmart. And I have categorized all of my cookie cutters because they were just loose in a big cardboard box and I just had to look through them every time I wanted to use some. So I put them all in these little Ziploc bags and I have them in a nice little storage container and so I can just go through per holiday and grab out what I need. So that's really good. I want you to know some of the cookie bakers will take their cookie cutters and just turn them into other things. So I got these ideas from Sweet Sugar Bell's blog. Now she does have some funky things on her blog. She has a virus that has a game attached to her blog, so uh, that and another very undesirable thing. So if you go to her blog, be forewarned. I have advised her uh, several days ago that she has these virus things attached to her blog. But she has amazing cookies. This is a ghost upside down and, and I have turned it into an elf. Her example of this was an angel, 
cookie cutter. I have an angel cookie cutter, but it wasn't quite... Here it is right here. I'll just show you. Here's the angel cookie cutter that I have. The one that she had had like a halo on top, so it did have a space here for the face. But I just don't think that this would... The hat isn't, the hat wouldn't be right. The dress here area and the feet wouldn't be right. So I just looked at my cookie cutters and said, oh, you know what? The ghost probably would work. And I even have a smaller one so I could make smaller ones too because this was a two set cookie cutter. So you just have to look at your cookie cutters a different way. This is actually a pumpkin. And my cookie cutter is not this big. I turned them, what I did was I turned them upside down and traced them. So this had the extra, the part that you actually hold on to with your hand. So, but this is her idea. She used a pumpkin. Then here the area where the stem is, is Mrs. Claus's little bun from her hair. And... Obviously, I'm not very good at drawing the eyebrows on. I may have to not do eyebrows on mine because my things, you know, things without eyebrows were okay, but then when I added the eyebrows, they got kind of mean looking. So, anyway, really cute. And then this one is just an oval. She had some kind of oval that she had made into a Santa face, and I, it, I, that's just so simple. I did play around. I have this kind of uh, sleigh. I didn't like where it went, so I may have to, you know, work with it a little bit more. But anyway, really cute ideas. I'm gearing up. I'm going to be doing some cookie decorating here more towards the end of the month. And so I'm gearing up. I'm practicing. I'm doodling now. And that way I'll know exactly what I'm going to do on the day that we do cookies. So as usual, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know.